Uh, other than each other, of course. <laughs> Name a fascinating person or two that you enjoyed meeting, or who sticks out in your mind from the trail. I had mentioned Elmer Fudd, Dan from Germany, so he'd be one he was quite a character. The other one that uh, came to mind recently, and I don't know if he finished, I actually have to, I kind of want to look into this, but it was a guy named Stick in the Woods, or uh, Aww, yeah. Yeah, Stick, who um, was a old teacher, teacher. school principal, and just a, a super, super friendly guy, and uh, he was a cool dude, so super friendly, always talkative, and always had a cool story to tell. Just seemed like a nice, genuine dude who was out there uh, doing the thing. So I got to look into that. I don't know if he finished or not, so. I know he was writing a blog, I'm sure I can find it online oh. somewhere, so. Can you think of uh, anyone else? Yeah, the, and this came up when the question was asked about a memorable person too, but mm. um, I, Bob Peoples, we got to meet him. Yeah, yeah, and I guess he was I a just, cool dude. I don't want to say it because I feel like everyone might it's say so that. so cliche, but, dude. <laughs> but um, no, he, he really is a fascinating person. Yeah. Uh, he's done so much for the Appalachian Trail. He runs a hospital in Hampton, Irwin? Uh, Irwin. Irwin tenant, yeah, that's what, yep, it was Irwin. Irwin. Yep. And, um... Or near Irwin, whatever it is. Are you, are you sure it's at Hampton? It is Hampton. Ah, it it's might be. I think it is Hampton. <laughs> it is, I, no, no, for real, I think it is Hampton. Okay. And, um, just such a cool guy, and just has so, such a wealth of knowledge, and kind, generous. Yeah, he was really a, cool a super, super chill dude. Yeah, I would definitely recommend staying at his place, just full of knowledge. He's, he's been all around, man, yeah. uh, and he's done extensive trail work on the AT and stuff. And, and if uh, you're in like the hiking community, he's pretty much worshipped. So yeah, you, you yeah. would see like stuff in log books or even stickers that are just talk about, yeah. you know, Chuck Norris <laughs> bowing down to him and stuff like that. It, it's funny. Yeah, but he's a, he was a good guy. He was great to listen to. Do you think you will have post through hike depression? Do you think you will do another through hike in the future? No and yes. Will you have post trail depression? I don't think I will. And you would do another yes. through hike? Yeah. Will your lifestyle allow you to do so? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, who helped you send you things you needed? Thank you and congratulations. I had my wonderful girlfriend, Anna, who's sitting on a bench over there coloring. So she hooked me up. After she brought us donuts After today. After she brought us delicious <laughs> donuts while we're doing this. And you had your parents and Brady. Yeah, parents and my boyfriend Brady yeah. and... Uh, oh, friends too. You had all sorts. Oh, I, I, and you, you yeah, I, I should probably touch on that videos. too. Yeah, I had all sorts of people reach out as well from YouTube come out. I had some people actually hand deliver things out to the trail or to a town near the trail. And I also had a Amazon wish list that I created because I was getting so many people um, asking how they could help out. So I had all sorts of people too from that, sending me stuff and whatnot, but it all shipped, whatever was shipped from that list went home and then and <clears throat> would ship that out to me whenever the time came. Yeah, so definitely just like strangers from his YouTube channel and I don't know, it was kind of cool because you know, <clears throat> you know, your partner, your parents, your friends, they're all gonna have your back, but it was just the people that like, I had people that reached out that were like, Maybe someone I went to school is with mom, yeah. or um, you know, like it's just like people. It was just in addition to people that I hadn't even talked to in a long time, or that kind of surprised me, and that <clears throat> that stuff was really cool. Yeah, for sure, all sorts of people helping you out along the way, and we mentioned that before. Like, I had people like completely, completely blow us away. I think blew both of us away. Like, and it was so fun because I got to tag along a lot of the time, <laughs> yeah, so, so that was really cool. She'd be with me. They pick us up, take us out for dinner, you know, get us like resupplies and stuff. Give us sentimental gifts. So, yep. how did being on the trail change you in a good way or change you in a bad way? I would like to think it's for the better. I don't think you can change in a bad way. Yeah, unless you're like super negative about the whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely think it's in a good way. And we kind of touched on that in another question. Wow. Just reinforced a lot of things I believed in. You don't need a lot to live life and live life well. Would a spot GPS tool be a good thing to have? Absolutely. Um, if you want to carry that weight around, for sure. But uh, a lot of people had them. I don't really see a downside to having them, yeah. besides them being a little bit heavy. But I mean, if you get in a jam, you know, they're a lifesaver. So just make sure that you don't leave it in your backpack and, and set then it off. set it off. And then have a search party come find you sleeping in a shelter at 2 30 in the morning. That happened. Look through my Virginia videos to see my explanation on it. Looking to through hike in 2019. Love the videos. Trying to decide on the best tent for my wife and self. 
Can you tell me what you saw couples using? Uh, don't want to break the budget, but don't want to be miserable either. Any advice, suggestions are greatly appreciated. Uh, the Z-Pax Duplex I saw out there more than any tent I think I had ever seen. Um, and I also think, I think the second most popular one I would say were either the um, the REI Half Dome 2 or the Big Agnes, Big Agnes the Copper Spur UL2 or UL3. Because um, I'm sure some couples will like a little bit more room, which you would get with the UL3, not the UL2. Anna and I have camped in the Copper Spur UL2 and we thought it was plenty of room for me and her. So, um, But I would recommend any of those actually. I think Z-Packs makes a great product and the duplexes it's won awards and it's won awards for reasons. It's, it's a great tent and it's outrageously light. So that's a big plus. Big Agnes will be a little bit cheaper. You can especially find them cheaper on sale and stuff too. So, and I have experience with that tent as well. I love it. And don't have experience with the REI, um, the Half Dome, the MSR Hubba Hubba 2, I think it is, is similar. So I saw them a lot. I don't know if you know any or if you were even. <laughs> nope. But yeah, those would be my suggestions. And um, I think any of those would be more than suitable. If there was a section of the AT you would do again in a heartbeat or recommend for a weekend long hike, where would it be? I'm not gonna say the whites, but I would do the whites all over again, of course. The presidential range, arguably one of the most beautiful spots on the trail. Katahdin, of course, that area, 100 mile wilderness. Yeah. But I would go back to Virginia. I really enjoyed Virginia. I don't know, <laughs> the, the Grayson Highlands maybe. I would maybe want to explore that area a little better because we only went through the AT there, so I don't know what else is in that whole park area, but I feel like that would be kind of cool to check out. Um, McAfee Knob, Tinker Cliffs, Dragon's Tooth is all within a pretty small section. Uh, the Balt in North Carolina, in Tennessee. I liked Vermont, I loved Vermont. Yeah, Vermont was pretty sweet. Uh, now that you are home, how has it been health-wise? It's been good, I feel good. Feel good? Yeah. She feels good. Uh, do your knees hurt from not walking? Yep, I touched on that. Um, it has gotten substantially better though. Also, is it hard to have a regular portion meal three times a day? That was hard before I left the trail. <laughs> it's hard to do it now after the trail as well. I don't, the portions aren't so hard. It's just having control over like what I'm eating. Yeah. So it's like, it's not, I mean, I, you know, I ate a lot before the trail too, but yeah. um, the portions aren't a big deal. It's just like, I'm still having cravings for all the. Yeah. The bad, bad things. things. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Dude, I literally ate Domino's three times yeah, like I, I just, got back. Yeah, I want like fast food. I want just... Uh, is there a feeling of frustration at the daily grind that you immediately have to adjust to? Yes. Just having to work. <laughs> it's unfortunate. If I were made of money, I would literally just hike all the time. I yeah. think it would be incredible. But again, I like my job. I like where I am. The people are awesome. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too bad to come back to. So. What, one thing about, this is kind of probably a better answer to a question earlier, but about um, kind of like what have you changed about you or your life now? Mm -hmm. um, bef before I started hiking, I just, you know, my whole life I've just, I always want to please everybody and I'm always busy trying to do stuff with people and I've totally, since I've been home, just practiced like just saying no like I just I can't tell you how many times someone will want to do something or ask something of me and I'm just like ah, I think I'm gonna stay in tonight mm. so I just think it's really put in pr into perspective that you know in the grind of like the real world yeah there are things you have to do like going to work and stuff but some of your other obligations and responsibilities like going and having small talk with someone at coffee or whatever yeah. you don't there are a lot of things that you don't have to do that you think you have to do <laughs> but you really don't have to so are there days that the trails difficulty surprised you and why Yes, New York. I was just gonna, yeah, that's why I was like, you should include that. I I don't know why, I just don't know why. No, the beginning of New York yeah. was, so, was very hard and no one ever, like everyone yeah. talks about like, Pennsylvania is this, Maine is this, New Hampshire is this. No one ever talked about New York ever. Yeah. And everyone I've talked to is like, yeah, you know, at that point you're doing 15 to 20 miles a day. And I talked to people and everyone was like, it took us <laughs> all day to do 13 miles. It was, it was hard. I, before the New, New Jersey, New York border, there's some state park. I went there, I got a ride to a grocery store and I bought enough food for over a week. I came back, crossed the border that night, and then went into New York the next morning, and oh my god, <laughs> did I move slow. Yeah. But the weather was like, it was so hot out, and like, 
Water was really iffy in New York too. Luckily there were trail angels that left gallons of it at like every yeah. trail, like the road crossings, but yeah. yeah, like really steep, steep climbs, like very, yeah. very steep. Not, it, not too long, but yeah. they're just draining. And it was just something like we hadn't really seen before and AWOL put in the guidebook too. I can't remember what it said, but- It like, says it looks like the elevation profile doesn't look as significant yeah. as the trail is difficult or yeah. something. Cause and, it didn't look that bad. Like uh, it looks it looked pretty flat but then we got there and it was just like kind of boulders and stuff it, mm. yeah it wasn't easy yeah new york was uh, a surprising challenge i feel like it was a good foreshadowing as to what you would see in the whites yeah so um but yeah snuck up snuck up out of nowhere because new jersey was awesome mm -hmm. new jersey was just kind of a breeze blow right through it surprisingly beautiful a last question what were your travel plans to get to emma Kalola falls so I flew from Massachusetts down to Atlanta. I mailed all my stuff that I couldn't take on the plane to the hiker hostel in, I think it's Dahlonega, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the stuff I carried on, my backpack fit um, the carry-on and it fit within the space requirements. So I took that and as part of staying at the hiker hostel the hiker hostel did just get sold so it's under new ownership now i think it's under a new name too but at the time it was like a hundred dollars roughly so from the atlanta airport you would take a train i forget the name of the station and they would have a shuttle pick you up there the shuttle would drive you back to the hostel you'd stay there for the night and then they would take you to uh, walmart or something if you needed to get food and stuff for the trail and then next morning you'd wake up and they'd drive you to either the approach trail or to the top of Springer. Do the approach trail. This question wasn't asked, but it, <laughs> you're going to walk 2,190 miles. Just do the approach trail. Like, it's like seven miles, eight it's miles. It's eight miles and the falls are really nice. It's beautiful. You get to- That's a good initiation. Yeah. If you can't do the extra eight, why? Why are you even going for the 2,190? but you get to stand under the pretty archway. I don't know. Do the approach trail. Mm -hmm. Come on. Everybody else gets driven on the top of Springer and then you still have to hike a mile anyway to get to Springer. So how did you get there? I, I flew into Greenville, North Carolina because that's where uh, Nicole's sister lived. And then she drove mm -hmm. us, you know, seven hours to Ella J, uh, Georgia. And then in the morning, she drove us to Amico Amicalola Falls State Park. So I, I was lucky. I had someone drive me. So Nice. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up. Me and Big Mammy answered all of your questions. It took us like three and a half hours, roughly to do so, but we're glad to have done it. Glad we could be of some hopeful assistance anyway. Hope you get something good out of the video. And yeah, anything left to no, say? Just, just thank you for the questions and thanks for letting me be a part of it. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, if you have any follow-up questions, um, we might be able to answer them in the comments and stuff, so you can leave that down there. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe all sorts of AT and then future hiking videos and stuff will be coming on the channel for those who don't know I was doing this before the AT as well so go check out some of the original videos I posted uh, gear reviews videos in the White Mountains all sorts of goodness uh, you can follow me on Instagram as well at Chris goes outdoors um, you want people creeping on you or no? Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not on YouTube yet, mm. but um, <laughs> I'd like to be. Uh, on Instagram, it's just at mostly freebird, mm. and that's pretty much where you can find me in there. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Random dogs jumping in. Um, so, yeah, that'll wrap it up. Oh, wait, and um, um, blogging. I guess I should do that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plug that, Sorry. For sure. So, yeah, Instagram is at Mostly Freebird. And then um, I have a, a blog, mostlyfreebird.com. But um, I, I've been writing for The Trek. And if you just Google Casey Frederick and The Trek, that'll those articles will come up. But I do plan on copy and pasting my articles from The Trek to my personal blog. Anything else? No, that's it. All right. We're good. Wrap it up. Thanks again for watching, Thank everyone. You. We'll catch you in the next one. Maybe we'll do some of those state review videos that were requested. I don't know if I had put that in there, but it was uh, a consideration we're considering. So a considered consideration. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, keep it real. Chris goes outdoors. Thank you. Bye. Big mammy. Big mammy. Big mama.